In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a recycler view with list items that play video. So uh, I'll just show you from the example here on the screen. I have a recycler view set up with some thumbnails and some text. If I scroll to a particular list item, a video will start playing. So here you can probably hear the volume there. And there's the video playing. If I scroll to a different list item, it will buffer and then play that video list item. So this is something I get asked a lot on my YouTube channel to make a tutorial on this. Uh, so I decided to kind of answer the call here and um, build something because I know this is a, it's a pretty complicated thing to do. Android doesn't have an out of the box solution for this. So the only way to do it is to implement something custom. And uh, oh, one feature I forgot to tell you is you can actually mute, uh, I don't know why I turned on the volume, because you can actually mute it. So I click the video, you can see a little mute icon, it will mute it, uh, unmute it. Also, it will save the mute state. So if I scroll to another list item, it's muted right now. Notice it's not playing any volume. To unmute it then, I have to click it, and there we go. So yesterday, I actually wrote a blog post outlining how to do this. So if you ever, and, I'm, and what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm actually gonna be just kind of following the blog post because this is meant to be sort of a intermediate-ish tutorial. There's a lot of things that I expect you to know if you're going to follow along with this. You know, I expect you to know how to set up a recycle view, you know, how to use a view holder, how to make data models, how to use Glide, which is the image uh, displaying library, bri library um, and also how to generally how to use ExoPlayer, which is the video player that I'm going to be using to play the videos. And just kind of as a side note, if uh, you want to know how a little bit more about ExoPlayer, you can go to codingwithmitch.com slash blog, and I have a blog post on how to get started with ExoPlayer on Android. So if you don't know what ExoPlayer is, it's the best sort of video playing library that's available out there today for Android. Google recommends using it. They actually use it in the YouTube application, the mobile application. So it's a really great library and that's what I'm going to be using. So without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so I'm going to be starting by building a completely brand new project. So I'm going to start a new Android project. I'm selecting empty activity, going to next, and I'm going to call this, I don't know, video player Recycler view, exo player, I guess. Pretty long name, doesn't matter what you name it, it's just an example. I'm gonna click finish, and it will, Android Studio will build that project. All right, we're ready to go. Android Studio has built the project. Now the first step before we do anything is we need to get all of the required dependencies. So I'm going into the build.gradle app file and I'm going to add a few things. As I said, I'm gonna be following along with the blog post that I made. So I'm just gonna get the dependencies from there. But definitely if you were, you know, when if you're building this application at some later date, today it's February 23rd, 2019. But if it's some later date, like months later, you're gonna to wanna to get the most updated versions of these libraries. So I'm gonna be grabbing the RecyclerView library, which you can get from the Android documentation. That's that one right there. The ExoPlayer library, which you can get from, the, you can just type ExoPlayer uh, Android, and you'll get to uh, the, see the Android documentation actually recommends it. But go to the GitHub page, get the most, the most recent version there. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I'm, I don't even use the most recent version. Uh, I, I specifically use 2.8.4, because 2.9.0 requires a minimum SDK version of 26. So actually, you're probably going to want to use this version unless you're targeting a higher SDK version, which you're probably not. So uh, maybe the ExoPlayer library, you want to use that version. But with Glide and with the RecyclerView library, you'll want to get the most updated versions. So I'm going to copy all of these here. So I have RecyclerView, ExoPlayer, and Glide, copying all those, going to Android Studio, and I'm going to paste those in. And uh, notice I'm using constants as the, as the versions here. So I need to go back to the blog post and I need to get those constants that are defined, that are defining the version. So I'm copying that, going back to Android Studio and I am pasting those above. I'm also going to change the version for this support library here just to the constant, just so they, they use the same version. So support version. There we go. Now I'm going to sync. All right, so step one is complete. I'm going to go back to the blog post here and see kind of what's next. All right, so if I scroll down, uh, the next step I have here in the blog post is modeling the data. So this is gonna be the data that gets displayed in the recycle view. So the recycle view list items, in other words. So I pull, if I pull up the, uh, the demo application here, it's the list items that are displayed here. So they're gonna have, oh, whoops, I'm getting a Snapchat from my fiance, better get rid of that, I'm trying to work here. Um, so you got a title, you got a video, and then what other, what other 
information you'd need. You're also going to need an image URL and uh, anything else that you would need in your project. In the example here, I have a title, a media URL, which is going to be the URL to the video, the thumbnail, which is obviously the URL to the, to the image, and then a description, which technically we don't use in this project. I just wanted to sh give you an example of uh, you, use it, you using other fields if you wanted to use other fields. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this entire media object class. All it contains is the fields and the getter and the setter methods. So once again, no, no point in me typing this out. It only takes time. So I'm just going to go create a new Java class. Actually, I'm going to create a models package. Sorry. Create a new package. Call it models. I'm trying to keep everything organized. Then inside the models package, create that media object class. And I'm just going to paste all of that in. So we have a title, media URL, thumbnail, description, and then all the getter and the setter methods. So now back to the blog post and let's see what's next. So coming on down, we come to the resources heading. So these are the resources for the images, for the videos. Basically, they're all the media objects. So I have five media objects uh, in, an, in a static media objects array. So this is kind of what's going to populate our recycle view. So I'm just going to copy that whole class, go back to Android Studio, and I'm going to create another new package named the util package. And then inside the util package, I'm going to create a new class call it resources, and I'm going to paste in those resources. So all this, oops, I need to import media object. So all this is, is a bunch of media objects, as I said. So you have the title, uh, the media URL, which is the video URL, the thumbnail, and then a description. Uh, so I've, I've taken the liberty of going ahead of time and uploading some resources that you can use. You can see it's referencing my Amazon Web Services S3, which is a place that I use to store any kind of uh, resources that I use for my website. So I've, I've put them up there for you to use as examples. So you can just copy this class and it will, it will work just fine. So, uh, that's, so that's our resources class. Now back to the blog post. So coming on down, continuing on, we have the drawables heading. So inside of the project, if I, if I pull it up here, we have a couple of drawable resources that I'm using. Uh, number one is the mute button. So if I click, we have that mute icon, that's a drawable. And there's one more, I can't remember what it is, but there's another one. So anyway, I'll click here and find out. So I'm clicking here, going to see the drawables. Uh, we have the volume drawables and we have, oh yes, a white, white background. So that's the default image for if for some reason Glide has a problem and can't load those images. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on each of these. So I'll just do an example of one. Uh, you can copy this and this is uh, IC volume off gray. Uh, you can go to Android Studio and you can either uh, right click on drawables, go to new drawables, uh, drawable file and just do IC uh, volume off gray 24 DP. And then just uh, you can just copy, paste that in. And then you have that vector asset. Alternatively, you could also just import it yourself. So you could right click on drawables, go to vector asset, find it that way and import it. But I've already done them ahead of time. So if you just want to copy paste them, that works too. So go ahead and grab those, those other two drawables. So that's going to be volume up gray will be the next one. So I'll copy that. New drawable file, I see volume up gray 24 DP. Paste that in. And then the last one is going to be the default image. So uh, white background. Oh, I can't actually paste that one in. So you're going to have to actually download that one. So if you go to white background, because it's a PNG file, you'll have to save this. It's just a plain white background. So just, just save that on your computer and then drag it drag it into your drawables file. So I'll just save it to my downloads, just to give you kind of an example. Saving that, there it is. Now I'm gonna to go to Android Studio. Uh, you're gonna to have to actually open up the file. So I'll find my Android Studio Projects folder, Android Studio Projects. Uh, we named this project Video Player Recycle View Exo Player, going into here, going to, there's the drawables file. Now I'm going to drag that into the drawables file. So taking that white background, dragging it into my Drawables file, whoops, into my Drawables file, and uh, there it is. So that's what you're gonna need to do to get all of the resources for the project. Next is the Recycler View list item layout. So as you can see from the blog, there's two layouts 
that I use in the project, activity main, and then the layout for the recycle view list items. So that's going to be all the individual layouts for each of these list items here. So uh, let's uh, get the layout. So here's the, it says in the blog that later we're going to do activity main because we still need to build a custom recycle view. So first I'm just going to grab this one, which is the list item layout for the list items. So I'm going to go into here, right click on layout, go to, whoops, new layout file. This one's going to be called layout. What did I call it? layout video list item layout video list item go to text just paste that whole thing in and there is your layout i'm actually going to close all these we don't need everything open back to the blog what is next the view holder so now we're getting into the the, the recycle view setup kind of process and uh, if you're not familiar with how a recycle view works how a view holder works you're going to want to watch a video of mine uh, I think it's called Recycler View on my YouTube channel. So if you don't know how to how Recycler View works, number one is you probably shouldn't be watching this video because uh, I recommend that you watch that as a prerequisite. But if you don't, that's okay. Just go to my YouTube channel, uh, type Recycler View, and you'll find a video on how to learn how to use a Recycler View. I got a whole bunch of them: Recycler View, Recycler View on Click Listener, to a new activity, horizontal Recycler Views, staggered, bunch of stuff. So check those out. So anyway, back to the view holder. So I'm expecting you to know what a view holder is. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to briefly talk about it. So I'm going back to Android Studio inside the main package. I'm right clicking, go to new Java class, and I'm going to call this, um, what did I call it? Uh, video player view holder. So video player view holder. And I'm going to paste that in. Okay, so I have a bunch of imports here. So I'm just pressing alt enter and I'm getting all of these imports and now I'm going to talk about what's what's going on here as soon as I get them all there we go so uh, if I go back to the video layout video list item uh, the way this is oriented you probably can't really see but uh, if we go to the top we have a constraint layout we have a text view which is the title so that's kind of just sitting at the top there and then I have a frame layout where I have an image view that's for the thumbnail I have another image view, which is going to be for the volume button, and then I have a progress bar. The thing to notice here is that there isn't anything to hold the video. There's no surface, uh, there's, I think they're called surface views, uh, that the EXO player would live in, or player views. There's nothing in there like that. And that's because we're going to be adding them programmatically when the video begins to play. So if we look at the demo here, notice that when I scroll, uh, the, it loads. Once the video is ready to play, the thumbnail is uh, basically, it's not removed, but it's hidden because a surface view is then added to the view that replaces it. So there's no, there's no surface view, there's nothing to host the video until the video is ready to play, then it's inserted programmatically and it starts to play. And uh, it's inserted on top of the thumbnail. So then what happens is when you scroll to another list item, that thumbnail is then made visible again because as you can see from the bottom here it's made visible again and then that surface view is removed and a new surface view is added when where the new video is playing so that's kind of how this is going to work so now let's go to the view holder and i'll explain what's happening here so i just have all the widgets that i showed you basically i have that frame layout which is the media container the text view which is the title uh, we have an image view for the thumbnail an image view for the for the volume control that progress bar I have a view object, which I'm calling parent, which is set to the item view for the view holder. So it's think of it as the entire, it's the entire view holder itself, that, uh, that list item. Think of it as the parent view for the list item. And then we have a request manager object, which is how I'm setting up Glide. So you can see down here when I actually set the thumbnail, I'm going request manager dot load into thumbnail. This is the, the same thing as if I was to go glide dot with uh, and if I had a reference to the context, so parent dot get context, and then I would do, you know, load and then dot into. So this is just a quicker, it's a more effective way to reference glide because that way I don't have to, you, I don't have to remake, reinstantiate the glide instance every time. I'm just referencing that same request manager object, which is going to have some default properties set to it. Because normally what I would do is I'd have to have, you know, request. Uh, request options, request request options equals new uh, request options, and then you'd 
my Android Studio is kind of laggy. Then you'd set like a placeholder, you'd set an error, and then you'd, you'd set those request options to Glide. So this just kind of saves a little bit of time. Instead, I'm just using that same request manager object and using that to set the images. So yeah, just in general, that's to save a bit of time. Okay, so view holder's done. That's what's gonna hold our views for the recycler view. So now let's come back to the old blog post here and we're scrolling down, we're continuing on. The next step is gonna be the recycler view adapter. And uh, to, much to your surprise, which is what I mentioned kind of up here in the blog post, um, there's not a lot of code in the recycle view adapter. It's actually very small. I bet you, I mean, it's my guess anyway, that a lot of you thought a lot of the logic for the video playing was going to be in the recycle view adapter, but it's actually not. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a custom recycle view class. So a class that extends recycle view, and that's where all the logic is going to be for the video player. Because as I explained, what's going to be happening is the, when you scroll to a certain list item, what's going to happen is a video surface view is going to be inserted into the recycle view. So I just think that it's a, it ended up being a much more organized way to do things to just build a custom recycle view. That way all the logic to, that has to do with all of that is nice and encapsulated in that class. And uh, yeah, I just think it turned out to be more organized that way. Okay, so I'm going to copy the video player recycler adapter, copying that, going to Android Studio, going to right click on the main package directory. Uh, so video player recycler uh, adapter. And I'm just going to paste that in. Oops, forgot a P there. And I'm going to kind of talk through this. So just going to get all the imports. Almost got them. Okay. So there's nothing really crazy about this. It's a pretty standard recycler view adapter. It extends the generic recycler view dot view holder class. Uh, the only two objects I have is a, a list of the media objects, which is the obviously the objects that we're going to be displaying in the recycler view. And I have a request manager object, which is that glide instance that I talked about here. So that's going to be the one that we we use here. Um, so yeah, there's nothing really special. We have just inflating that that layout. Uh, and then I'm calling on bind on the view holder, which is a method that I built here. So instead of putting you know this code right here inside of the on bind view holder method, I built a method named on bind just to kind of clean this up and make the adapter really clean essentially. So there's not much code in here. It's very generic. Um, if you know how to build recycle views, this should be there should be nothing special here, nothing that confuses you. All right, back to the blog. So coming on down, this is this is the this is the most difficult part. Uh, this is now the custom recycle view section. So this is where all the logic is going to be for deciding what video to play, uh, how to set up the exo player, whether to mute it or unmute it. Basically, this is this is the bread and butter of this tutorial of this example. If you um, if you're going to struggle with anything, it's going to be this. So I'm not going to copy this. I'm actually going to probably hmm, it's pretty long. If I was to type this out live, it would probably take me like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes. I'm just going to walk through it. I'm just going to copy paste and I'm going to walk through it because this video is already going to be, I think, somewhere around, I don't know, 15, probably coming up on 20. So I'm, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to walk through it. And if you don't like it too bad, because <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's too, it's just going to take me too long and I want to. I want to finish this all in one video. So I copied all that video player recycle view is what I'm going to call it. So I'm coming back into our project. I'm going to close all the other classes. I'm going to create a new class named video player recycler view. Um, I'm going to extend the extend. I don't need to. I'm just going to copy paste it in. All right. So let's scroll up to the top and just uh, go through this. So the first thing is that it extends recycle view. It extends the recycle view class because we are creating a custom recycle view class. It's going to be a lot of imports here, so this might take a minute. I'm just importing everything. I'm I might, might actually fast forward the video here and uh, just to get all the imports, and then I'll come back. All right, so I'm back. I got all the imports. Uh, so a lot, a lot of things happening here. I'm going to go through this slowly. Um, yeah, this is kind of it's kind of complicated because there's a lot of math involved, I guess. So I'm going to go through this slowly. First of all, we extend by recycle view, as I said, because we're creating a custom recycle view. Uh, here's all the UI components. We have thumbnail, volume control, progress bar, that parent view holder, 
uh, the frame layout. These are all the things that I mentioned earlier in the video. You should be familiar with these. This is going to be the, the player view. So this is the thing that gets either inserted or removed depending on what video is going to be playing. And then we have, of course, the exo player right here, which is for actually playing the video. So the exo player plays the video. It plays it on top of the player view or inside the player view. The player view is the container. Uh, next, we have the variables. So we have a list of our media objects, which you sh should be familiar with. This is going to be the same list that's inside the Recycler View adapter. Uh, the video surface default height, that's going to be the, the default height given to that video surface. We're going to be using this in some math calculations later on. Zero is just kind of the default that gets set to it. Uh, the screen default height is the total height that the device has the total height of the device display. So if I go to my phone, that's going to be the, the height of the display. We need to do this because to, to decide what video to play, essentially what it does, I'll just kind of run you through the logic so you get an idea before we, we get into it. So what happens is it right now I have three, I haven't let go of the mouse, by the way. Um, I have three kind of potential videos that could play. How does it know which one to play? Well, it should play the one uh, that whose list item occupies the most of the view and uh, it gives preference to the top one. So if I scroll here, um, this middle one will kind of play. If I, uh, the bottom of the list is kind of an exception. If you scroll right to the bottom, the uh, bottom one has to play, but that's kind of extra logic that you needed to add. So it's not a very good example. If I scroll to these three, and notice the two bottom ones are now occupying the same amount, it's going to give preference to the top one. So that's the one that will play. The top one will play unless, see now a bit of that top one is cut off, now the this one will play because a tiny bit of that is cut off. So that's kind of how it works. It looks at how much of that view holder is in view. If some of it is cut off, then it plays uh, the one that isn't cut off and it gives preference to the top one. So as I said, an example of that is there's two that are completely in view here. It will play the top one because it gives preference to that top one. So that's kind of the logic. That's how we're going to program this. Okay, so coming down to the more variables, context obviously is just the context. The play position is the position of whatever list item is currently playing. Is video added is a Boolean used to, deter to keep track of whether a player view, uh, which is the video container, has been added to the view or it hasn't. So if you look at the demo application right now, it would be true. If I was to close the app and restart it with no videos playing, it would be false. Uh, request manager is, of course, Glide, which I outlined earlier. Uh, volume state is an enum that I created up here. So it's an enum volume state. The volume can either be on or off, just kind of two constant values. That's what I'm using to keep track of whether the volume is on or off. So that's, uh, that's it for the variables. Now coming down, we have the two constructors. Notice I have one constructor with an attribute set. You need to have a uh, constructor with at least one attribute set because I'm using this. I'm going to be using this in a layout. So uh, for example, if I go into activity main and I go to add this recycle view, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to call uh, add our video player recycle view, go match parent, match parent. I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't have a constructor with the attribute set. So you need to make sure you have one of those. Uh, let's see, I might as well give this an ID while I'm in here. I think, I think the ID I give this is just recycler view and give it an orientation of vertical. So there's our, our recycle view has been added to the view now. Now let's go back to our, our class and continue going through this. So the first method in the class is this init method. And you can see it's called in both constructors. So in it, uh, I guess the, the only thing to do here is kind of just go through it. So first of all, I get the context, which is the application context, not the context of the activity. Uh, then I use the a display object to figure out what the video surface default height is and what the default uh, screen height is. So this probably seems a little confusing. Both these variables have height, but this one points to an X component. This one points to a Y component. Uh, so, oh, I accidentally closed the app. So that's because the technically on the screen, the height is this component. So this up and down right here, this long kind of uh, the, the longest one. But on the video screen, the height is here. So they're two they're two different components. That's why it's pointing to these these two different points. So kind of confusing, but uh, 
now hopefully that explains things. Next is the instantiation of the video surface. So that's the player view for holding the the uh, the EXO player playing the video. Uh, then we have this is very important the set the resize mode. So if I'm adding if I'm adding the surface view dynamically like I am, I need to give it I need to tell it what to do when it's inserted into a view that it doesn't fit properly or has a a different aspect ratio than the the video that's playing. So by setting this resize mode zoom attribute, what it will do is it will automatically uh, use the aspect ratio of the video and fit inside of the view perfectly. So that's a very important thing to do. You need to remember to do that. Next, as we come down here, is the EXO player setup. So if you want to know how to set up an EXO player, like I said, check out my. I made a blog post on it. I'm not going to go to to it in detail. It's called Getting Started with EXO Player. It's on my blog. That'll show you this. This example actually shows you how to play audio, but it's basically the same thing. It's uh, the same sort of setup procedure. So take a look at that, and uh, I talk about in a little bit more detail of how to set up an EXO player. But that's all this is here. These, all of these objects here are for setting up the EXO player. So we have a couple objects instantiated. We have the instantiation of the EXO player right here using the new simple instance method, uh, and then some control, oh, some properties set to the, the surface view. So setting the controller to false disables the default controller that goes onto view with the EXO player. If you don't disable this, what happens is when the video is playing, there's kind of like a little thing that appears on the bottom for controlling the playback. It doesn't make sense to use in this application, so we're disabling that. And then of course, coming down and setting the player to, or setting, yeah, setting the player to the surface and setting that volume control constant. This is a method that I made, it's at the bottom of the screen. So if I go down here, this is just a couple methods for controlling the volume. It just is either gonna show the volume control drawable or uh, hide the drawable, basically. So don't worry too much about that, I'll come back to that later. So next as we come down, we have an on-scroll listener. So this is the scrolling listener for the recycle view. Uh, the, the state, the thing that we're interested in, the reason why I'm using an on-scroll listener is we can't, it's, you're not allowed to change what the list items in a recycle view look like or what they're doing or the data until the recycle view has stopped moving. If so, if I was to, if I was to be scrolling and, uh, kind of try and change something in the recycle view, change an object, change a view. Basically, if I was to try and do anything, it would crash by default. So what you need to do is check for this scroll state idle constant. And uh, what that means is the recycle view has stopped. So once the recycle view has stopped, then we can take action and start making some changes. So in that case, once it's stopped, if the thumbnail does not equal null, I want to show the thumbnail. So that's uh, this is for after a video is played. So this is kind of like resetting, resetting what it was like. So right now, for example, this video is playing. What I want to happen when I scroll, when I scroll away, I want that thumbnail to be set visible again. So that's what happens. That's what this line of code is doing right here. So it's set that thumbnail to be visible again. Coming down this next if statement, uh, this is the special case, I, t I mentioned this earlier, of when the recycle view reaches the bottom of the list. Because as I said, it always gives preference to the higher list item. So if I was to scroll to these two list items, it's playing that higher one because it gives preference to it. But then what happens, that, that causes an issue when you get to the bottom of the list. Because at the bottom of the list, if it gives preference to the top one, it will never play that bottom entry. So, um, so if I scroll to the bottom, notice that one plays. That's what this bit of logic is here for. So it's saying if the recycle view can't scroll anymore, so in other words, if it hits the bottom, I want to, I have a Boolean here that says is end of list and it's true. That means it's going to play that entry at the bottom of the list. And uh, we haven't gone through the play video method yet, but I believe that's gonna be the, the next one. So just hang on and we'll, we'll get to that. So as I come down here, I also have an add on child attach state listener. This listener is used when new views are added to the recycler view. So that means as I scroll, um, new views are being added. So I'm scrolling, that one gets added, that would cause this method or this method to fire. Nothing's happening here. This is the one that we're interested in. This is on child view detached from window. This will fire when a view is removed from the recycler view. So if I'm scrolling down, um, so if I'm scrolling down, this top one is gonna get removed eventually when it's, when it's uh, off the view. That's gonna cause this method 
to trigger. And inside this method, it will reset, I'm calling a method named reset video view. And what reset video view does is it removes old surface views or old player views that were playing videos. So remember I said we're going to be dynamically adding player views to play the videos. Well, that means we're also going to be dynamically removing them. So as I scroll, that this view right here is going to uh, be removed. Oh, it doesn't go that high. I'll go back to the top as an example. So that one's playing. As I scroll, it's going to be removed, which will cause this method to trigger, which will then call the reset video view method. So that's going to be uh, that's going to remove the video view from the screen. If I go to that method, it checks to see if a video has been added. If it has, it then removes that video. It resets the play position. Um, hides the, the video surface view, and it sets the thumbnail to be visible again. So it kind of just kind of resets everything and gets ready for the next video that's going to be played. All right, continuing on here. So next we have a, uh, this is what controls the playback for the EXO player. So the video player is the EXO player. I can add a player event listener to it, and uh, we're interested in the on player state changed callback. So inside here, I can get some information on what the state of the EXO player is as it's preparing the video. So we have state buffering, which will then set the progress bar to visible, which is what you see in the demo. If I scroll to anything while it's buffering, it's showing that progress bar. Um, when it's ended, it seeks to the beginning. So it essentially, it will reset the playback and just continue to play that same video over and over again. The state ready will be, be called when the video is done buffering and it's ready to play. So in that case, the, we want to hide the progress bar and I want to add a video view because now the video is ready to play. So if the video, if there's no video added on the screen currently, I want to add a video view uh, through the add video view method. And that's the next method that I'm gonna create. So that's the end of the init method right here. So a lot going on there. I'm sure you're confused. There's definitely a lot going on here. Uh, now we're gonna run through the rest of these methods. So I'm going to go to the add video view method and we'll take a look. So this is essentially going to be the opposite of the reset video view method. So inside here we have, we're referencing the frame layout, which if we look, whoops, not an activity main inside of the, uh, the list items, uh, that's this frame layout right here. So it's referencing the frame layout and it's adding that video surface view to it. Then it's setting the is video view added to true. It's requesting focus. It's setting the visibility to visible, setting the alpha to one. So that's the same, kind of the same thing as either invisible or visible. I could set this to zero. That would be setting it invisible or one is setting it to visible. And then we want to hide that thumbnail because now the surface, the video surface view has replaced that thumbnail. So that's what's happening as we scroll the recycle view. Uh, if I scroll to the top, there's the thumbnail showing. If I let go, the video view is added and the thumbnail is then hidden. So that's kind of what this add video view method is for. So now let's scroll up. And um, so we went through the init method. Uh, let's see here. The next is going to be probably the play, probably the play video method. So remember inside the scroll state listener, we have the play video method being called as soon as the scroll state is idle. So as soon as the, the user stops scrolling. So let's go take a look at the play video method right here. Man, this is going to be a long video. It's going to be like a half an hour, 35 minute video. But uh, I guess it can't be helped. It's a lot, a lot going on here. So, okay, so what are, we, what are we doing? So playing playing the video, this is where all the math is for determining which video to play uh, based on its position on the screen and how much of the video view would be showing. So first I have my is end of list Boolean, as I said, which is the special case for when you scroll to the bottom of the list. If that is true, um, basically, I skip all of this logic right here. So if that's true, if it's the bottom of the list, I just skip that logic and I set the target position, so the position of the list item that's going to have the video to the bottom of the list. So just kind of skipping, skipping all of this. So obviously, that means that all this logic is for determining which video to play uh, given uh, more than one list item on the screen. So what is happening here? So we have two variables being declared at the top, start position and end position. Start position will get the position of 
the first visible list item, this will be the last visible list item, as you can see from these methods here. So what that means is, uh, suppose I have all of, I have three list items technically in view right now. I have MVVM and live data, REST API retrofit, and sending data to a new activity. There's three in view. The first visible one will be this one. The last visible one will be this one. So it's gonna return the, those two positions. Um, so then we have some logic to handle uh, those two cases. So if there is more than two list items on the screen, set the difference to be one. So in this case, we have three list items on the screen, but we're only interested in two of them, which is gonna be uh, the, the, the two that are next to each other. So that's what this does. It sets the position to uh, star position plus one. So if this is the star position, it would then set the end position to this one. So it's setting the two videos to the star position and the end position to be right next to each other. Um, if there is more than one list item on the screen, uh, so in other words, if the star position does not equal the end position, which is what we have, we have three list items on the screen, uh, then we set, we get the start position video height and the end position video height. So it's, it's calling a method called get visible video surface height. So what this does is it determines how much of this view is on the screen. So here, some of it is cut off, here some of it isn't. So what it does is it, it determines how much of that height is on the screen. And then using that information, it determines the target position. And this is, this is kind of what we were after here. This is, the target position is what list item we're going to play. So there's a bit of logic here. If the start position video height is greater than the end position video height, start position, otherwise end position. So it's just setting that target position. Um, and then we have an else statement here. So if, so if if there is more than one list item on the screen, which is the case for this app, otherwise if there's only one list item on the screen, so in other words, if that list item occupies the entire screen, obviously the start position would just be, or the target position would just be the start position. And that's what you see in an app like Instagram. So if I was to open Instagram on my app and you scroll to the feed, um, in this, in an app like this, the list item occupies the entire screen. So for them, well, I guess it, not in all cases probably, but I think in most cases, um, whoops, it's not working properly. Yeah, it occupies the entire screen. So that's, that would be, that would be this bit of logic here. It would then just set the start position to the target position. Um, I already explained this, that's for the end of the list. All right, so coming down, carrying on here. Now this little if statement here, if target position equals play position, uh, that means that the video position hasn't changed. So for example, if I was to play this video and I was to scroll around a bit and then let go, uh, that, that, would, that, would, uh, that would cause this if statement to run right here because nothing has changed. The conditions haven't changed. The target position is still the play position. It should just carry on playing that video. So that's what uh, this if statement is catching right here. Uh, so now set the position of the list item is that's to be displayed. So this is where we actually set the play position. So play position equals target position. If the video service equals null return, for whatever reason, that would be kind of some error handling. Now that we have the play position, we need to remove the old service views. So that's what this does. It's setting the visibility to invisible, and it's removing that old surface view. So that's if I was to scroll to another video, the play position would change. That one gets removed. That one gets added. So now that we have the play position, we have the video surface all ready to go. We know where we're going to play the video. The next step is setting up the view holder and setting the correct properties to the exo player and all that stuff. So we get the an integer known as the current position, which is gonna be the target position minus the first visible item position. Then I can use that to get a reference to the view holder. So I'm, I'm creating a view object named child, get child at current position. So that's gonna get, uh, yeah, it's, get, it's getting a reference to the view holder. If the child is null, it returns because that means there's gonna be an error. So now I can instantiate that view holder. So video player view holder equals child.get tag. Uh, this is very important right here. So if I take a look at the view holder class, notice that I am setting a tag. So in the onBind method, I'm calling parent.set tag. That sets an identifier for this particular view holder. And then I can get a reference to it by referencing that tag. So I'm getting a reference to that particular view holder through that parent view, which is, well, I guess the child view technically in the recycle view, uh, like that. So now that I have a reference to that particular view holder, I can access all of the properties. 
So I can get thumbnail, progress bar, volume control, all that stuff that exists inside the view holder. So this this kind of this kind of little section right here is very important. Uh, that allows us to get a reference to the view holder, which we need to do anything really. But now that we have that, we have everything that we need. So I can set the player. I can set an on-click listener to the player. This is going to be for turning the volume on and off. Just a basic uh, on-click listener I created right here. It says toggle volume video on-click listener. Uh, and then the rest is setting up the data source for the Excel player. So once again, if you want to know how to use the Excel player in a little bit more detail, check out my blog post. But essentially what you need to do with it is you need to create a data source to add to the Excel player. You can't just pass like a, a URL to it. You have to create an, a media source right here. So if you look down here, um, which creates a media source from the URL, and then you pass that media source to the Excel player using the prepare method, and that will then prepare that whatever that media source is, whether it's audio, whether it's video, anything. So it's always the same process. You create a media source, set it to the Excel player, and then you prepare it. Uh, and then set play when ready true basically means uh, it's it's setting it to play. If I was to set it to false, that essentially means pause. So true is play, false is pause. So obviously we want it to play as soon as it's ready. So I'm setting that to true. All right, so carrying on here, um, get video. This is that method that I mentioned earlier, get visible video service height. That determines the, the height of the, the visible region for the view. I think we're pretty much done actually. I've, I've been through almost everything. Remove the video view. We'll just remove the, the video view obviously. Add the video view. Wait, remove video view. Yeah. Uh, reset the video view. Went through that. Uh, release the player. We haven't got to that yet. Oh, and then toggling the volume. So the, all, the, all the toggle volume and set volume control methods do is uh, you saw in the on click listener. So if I go up here, the video view on click listener, which is attached to the view holder parent. Uh, so if I click on that, all it does is toggle the volume. So if the volume state is off, turn it on. If the volume state is on, turn it off. Pretty pretty basic stuff. I have a little animation here called when they come into view. So if you go to the app, uh, notice it kind of it kind of oops, it's too loud. Um, it kind of fades in and then fades out. So if I click it, it fades in, fades out, fades in, fades out. That's a little animation that I added. So Animate volume control is what does that. It uh, just sets, uh, so it cancels old animations. It sets the alpha to one, and then it animates it fading away. That's all it does, pretty pretty simple. Um, so that's basically it. That's the video recycler view adapter. The last bit of code that we have to write is in main activity, and that's gonna be just kind of initializing the recycler view, setting the media objects through this method right here, and also releasing the player when the activity is destroyed. That's a very important thing to do because the Excel player will continue playing unless it's released. So if, if uh, the activity is destroyed, obviously we want to release the player. Okay, so let's go back to the blog post and look at the last kind of bit of code. So I'm scrolling down past all that code that we just went through. Um, I wonder how many of you are still here, by the way, because uh, this video is insanely long. I don't know, it probably is 40 minutes or something. Um, yeah, anyway, so activity main is the next part. I've already actually done this. So you, you wanna add that video player recycler view. I've already done that. Um, oh, and then we're gonna add some item decoration too. So that's gonna create a little bit of space, that little bit of space here that you see between the list items. So I'm just gonna copy this class, um, vertical spacing item decoration decorator. So I'll go into the util package, go to new, vertical spacing item decorator. And I'm going to paste that in, get all those imports. So there's the, that's to add the spacing as I just said. And now I believe the very last part is main activity. So uh, not much here, we just have to initialize the recycle view, initialize the glide instance and insert the on destroy method. So I'm copying that, going to main activity pasting that in, get all these imports, We're almost done, so close. I don't know if I've made a video this long before, like all in one shot and put it on put it on YouTube. Oh, I need to declare the recycle view, so private video player recycle view, M recycle view, and M recycle 
recycle view equals find view by id r to id dot recycle view and then i want to call init oops init recycle view and we're good to go that should be it so running through this we just have a basic setup for a recycle view you got your linear layout setting the layout manager or sorry layout manager setting the layout manager you have that vertical spacing item decorator with a little bit of vertical spacing adding that to the recycle view we have the media objects which i get from the resources class uh, i'm setting the media objects to the recycle view i'm initializing the recycle view adapter passing the media objects passing that glide instance that i talked about right here and then setting the adapter and other than that we have the on destroy method which is releasing the player and that's it we're done we are finally done now when i run it let's see how many errors we get hopefully none and there's nothing there but lucky for us i know why it's because i didn't add internet permission let's go into here and add that internet permission and now let's run it again and cross your fingers because this video is so long i don't want to do any debugging i just want it to work can you just work please there we go it works all right so i'm going to uh scroll down and see if it works there it's playing the second entry oh it's uh playing two i have two open whoops try that again all right we're scrolling down there's the volume mute works let's go to the next one notice it's still muted unmute it play the next one we look good we did it first time no errors although i did follow a blog post um if you followed along this whole video i i want to know who watched this entire thing i'm actually very very curious to see who watched the whole thing uh because this video is insanely long it might be my longest video if you watch the whole thing uh you know give a thumbs up leave a comment saying i watched the whole thing and like a crying emoji or something like that because i know this is way too long and uh, hopefully this was helpful. I did this because a lot of people requested it. It took a very long time. Um, yeah, so if you liked the video, like the video. And uh, pretty soon, probably on Monday, or not Monday, probably early this week, I'm going to start publishing for the REST API and database cache course. So if you don't know what that is, if you go to courses on my website, there's a REST API with MVVM and Retrofit 2 course. I'm creating um, a continuation onto that where I implement a database cache with SQLite and the Room Persistence Library. So pretty soon the lectures will be released on that. So uh, you can look forward to that. And if I don't see you there, I will see you in the next video.